Hi, and welcome back to the Empire of Dirt Workshop. Today I'm going to talk about the preset stop mechanism ah! on a BH2 scope. Uh, this specifically is a BHTU scope. Uh, please disregard the condition of this scope. This is just an old, uh, sorry old scope that's desperately in need of a clean up and service. Uh, according to the stickers on this thing, it was last serviced back in 1997. And I 100% believe that because uh, the mechanism is very stiff and stage is uh, very stiff and so forth. But and that matters today because I'm just going to talk about this preset mechanism here. It's a, it's a mechanism that uh, limits the height adjustment of your stage. If I release this knob by turning it counterclockwise, I can, with some effort, since it's very stiff, I can raise and lower the stage on this thing. Now, uh, for normal operation, uh, the intent of this preset stop is such that you could... Uh, Put a slide on the stage, you could go through and get everything in focus and everything's ready to go. Then you could lock that stage, and at that point the stage can't go any higher. But since it's locked in this preset position, you uh, could lower the stage, give you as much room as you need to do whatever you need to do, apply oil to the slide and so forth and so on. Then you could uh, just sweep it back in up against that stop, and you're right back in your magic position that you started from. So that's a pretty handy feature to have, uh, in addition to just using it to try to avoid crashing into things. It's just a nice convenience to have, so it's nice to have this mechanism working. I get a lot of questions about this mechanism, like what is it for, how does it work, and sometimes, uh, more importantly, how do you put the thing back together once you take it apart. But uh, let's, uh, let's talk just a little bit about this. If you loosen this thing up, like I said, it's free to move up and down. Once you lock it, it won't go any higher. It will go down from that point. And if I release this, you'll hear that slap sound. That's characteristic of these things. If you, uh, if that slap sound is uh, sluggish or muted, then that probably means that you need to service this mechanism. But that's the basic mechanism and how it works. Uh, from here on out, I'm not going to be using this scope anymore. I'm just going to be using a, a partial scope that I can take apart and show you the inside of this and so that you can get a good visual understanding of how this thing works. Okay, so I have here an old part of a part of a BHS scope. Uh, this thing is in pretty bad shape. It needs a lot of service. Uh, for instance, the uh, focus block. Yeah, that thing should fall easily on its own accord, and it's not. This thing is pretty well greased up. The grease is real solid, and um, it's pretty well, I should have said, locked up. It was really stiff. What I have done is I've taken it apart and cleaned out enough of the mechanism, enough of the old grease and everything, so that I can use this as a decent show and tell explain to you how this uh, preset mechanism works. So uh, let's uh, proceed with that. So um, I've taken out the gearbox here so that the uh, coaxial focus is totally decoupled from the focus block and I've got uh, this thing pretty much disassembled so if I pull this knob out we'll get this out of the way. We don't need this for the explanation. I've taken out the three screws that hold this uh, course focus knob in place. So I'm going to take this knob off. This knob has three screws, three screws hold this knob on and they screw into this brass piece. And so for the purposes of our demonstration, this brass piece is the coarse focus knob. As I turn the coarse focus knob on the back, you'll see that this brass carrier piece moves with it. So just uh, as I talk about the coarse focus knob, this will be what I'm talking about. Now what I want to do is I want to just hold this thing uh, stationary and unscrew the knob on the back side. I've already taken out two set screws that hold this in place. So I just unscrew this until this piece comes loose. Like that. I'm going to take this uh, spring out and set it aside. We won't need it for later until later. And what we have now is uh, this little collar here. I've taken out the stop screw for this so that this collar will, will move continuously. It will not hit this stop. But if I loosen up this collar, this little pin here on a disc inside here uh, is free to rotate. Uh, it's kind of hard for you to see that probably, but that, that thing is rotating. Rotates freely. If I snug this knob down, then it no longer rotates. It's locked in place. So let's, uh, since this uh, stop pin is taken out, I can unscrew and remove this. So let's do that. Get this out of here. Since it's uh, going to be in the way of seeing what's going on. Okay, now, so we're pretty well down to the brass tacks here. The only thing we have is a little disc here. 
It's got a polished backside so that there's very little friction, and this inside surface here is polished as well. A little pin that protrudes on here. And um, I have here the course focus mechanism. Some of the stuff is missing from this side, but you'll see that when I put this in the, in the normal position, this uh, shaft extends through there, and this piece screws onto that. And when I pull this thing back, you'll see that it, it's uh, no longer protruding. And it's out of the way, and it doesn't interfere with this mechanism over here. So that'll be that'll be necessary to uh, to explain this, and in fact, to put this thing back together properly. So to get an idea of how this thing works, um, we put this disc inside here. Ordinarily, this collar would be screwed on there, and when the collar is screwed on there, this brass surface here pushes down on the top edge surface of this disc and holds this disc stationary. So when the knob is loosened up and that is not pressing down, this disc is easily easily free to, it's free to move without any real friction. On the other hand, if I put that knob down and tightened it down, it would be effectively pressing down on this, and then this disc would be locked in place and this pin would be stationary. Okay, so I want to just quickly put this back together. I want to pull this back. Lay this down in the seated position, make sure it's free to spin, hold it there, and then tighten the back course knob. Keep going until they're snug. And now as I move the course knobs, you can see that they move together. A little noisy because uh, the fact that this thing uh, needs to be torn down and totally re-lubricated, but ignore the noise. Okay, so if you... Uh, you can imagine the black collar that locks this disc down is loosened up. This disc is free to rotate, and you can see that. The two pins, uh, the pin on the coarse focus knob here, on, the, on what, what's attached to the coarse focus knob, that pin is free to push that uh, pin on the lock disc around either direction because, well, it's not locked down. On the other hand, if the lock disc were tightened down, which is kind of what my finger is simulating now, now it's not, not able to move. Now, so the whole way that this mechanism works is uh, ordinarily these things will be, these two pins will be like this in relation to each other. And as you raise the stage up, you're, uh, you're moving this pin, this lock pin, this pin on the lock disc, you're moving it counterclockwise. And so as you uh, raise the stage and you get it to the height where you want to lock it at, you would now tighten down the black lock collar. At that point, you could lower the stage in this direction, as you can see. The stage can be lowered freely. The stage can't go any higher because this disc can't rotate anymore, and that prevents the stage from going from from raising anymore. So, kind of that's the basic way that the lock works. But in order to really explain it, now we need to we need to explain the spring. What the spring does. The whole purpose of the spring. If I rotate this guy, if I rotate my Focus on my course focus knob in the direction to raise the stage. It'll it'll move this ring. It'll push it around. As you can see, just by the geometry, it has no option. It has to push that disc. If I go the other way, they separate, and that doesn't work because uh, in order for this lock mechanism to work, this thing needs to this lock ring needs to follow it so that the pins are always in contact, whether I'm going this direction or this direction. If there if there were ever any gap, then it wouldn't be locked in the proper position. So that is the purpose of the spring, that's to keep these two guys in contact. So uh, let me go ahead and install the spring and let you see how that works. Okay, so to put the spring in, what I want to do is just hold this stationary. Loosen the course knob on the back. It's making a little noise because there's no uh, lubrication in the threads. But I uh, pull this out and I want to basically keep this, keep this threaded portion inside there so that it doesn't stick out and interfere. What I would like to do then is uh, essentially put this lock in a certain position and, and I would normally at that point tighten down the plastic lock knob that would hold this stationary. Take this spring here, it's just a coil spring, it's got a loop on the front and the back. It's symmetrical so it doesn't matter how it goes in, it's interchangeable. But I take the loop that's on the back and I uh, put it over that pin on the stop ring, on the lock ring I should say. So it's over the stop pin on the lock ring and now this piece here, which is effectively the course focus knob, also has a has a pin on it. That goes into the front loop of the screw, like this. Once that happens, then I want to put this down and hold it in position 
move it back and forth a few times to make it pro make sure it's properly in position. And I want to uh, simulate the lock ring to keep this uh, simulate the lock collar to keep this ring from moving. And I want to while pushing down on it to keep it in place, I rotate it around until these two uh, pins come in contact like the, like this, as you can see. Now I carefully pull this back just enough to cross the pins over and immediately push it back in. And then I want to move it around a little bit and make sure it's free. At this point I can let go of that and as long as I keep that thing seated as it is, the spring and everything will stay in the normal position. So I want to hold it in that position then I want to tighten down the course focus knob on the back and as I do that okay so now they're snug down enough such that they move together so I move this ring, I move this knob here effectively this knob here is moving so now as you can see with that uh, tension on there and we went all the way around and crossed over so it can't undo itself with that tension there those two pins now regardless of which way I turn the knob those two pins stay in intimate contact with each other which is necessary for this thing to work so if I'm sitting here using this wherever I go I would uh, tighten down the collar and lock it now the stage can't go any higher but if I turn it the other direction let me lock it down here if I turn it the other direction the, the, the pins free to move they're free to separate and so the stage can be lowered but it can't raise any higher than that point right there so if I turn this quarter of a turn or so and then if I were to release the imaginary lock collar that's not there you hear that slap and as you can see that's what's happening is the spring is bringing those two pins back into contact into contact with each other so that's that slap sound you hear when you're when you release the lock if the stage is lowered if you if you release the lock in the normal locked position nothing happens but if you lower the stage and then release it you'll hear that slap So I hope that gives you a pretty good and uh, pretty good intuitive understanding of how this lock mechanism works. It's really uh, it's really a pretty clever mechanism. Uh, whoever came up with it must have been some kind of a genius, huh? don't you think? Yeah, I don't know if you heard that or not, but there was just a little bit of squeak on there, and that's because when I put this thing together, I just slapped it together. I handled all the parts, and there's oil, there's skin oil, and there's grease from the mechanism on these parts everywhere, and that's what's causing that sluggish noisiness that you're hearing once in a while can't get it to do it now so well uh, when you put these together for real you need to make sure that everything inside there all those sliding surfaces are surgically clean there's no skin oil or anything otherwise you will you will potentially end up with that issue